Hey, friends and family, join First Assembly Cornerstone for 15 Days in the Word Prayer and Empowerment Series held August 17th to September 4th, 2020. Meet us for a time of prayer and an encouraging word starting at noon. It will be held on Zoom, YouTube or Facebook Live. The links will also be shared via Twitter. Invite your friends and family. We want to see you all there to be able to participate with us in a wonderful time of encouragement, empowerment, and prayer. We look forward to seeing you there. It's that time, First Assembly Cornerstone, 15 Days in the Word, Prayer and Empowerment Series. We are asking God to reveal, refresh, rejuvenate, heal, and transform the land during these uncertain times. Before we begin, let's take a few moments to quiet our minds and prepare our hearts to receive God's word.
Be sure to have a notebook and pen ready and read the daily passages at least twice. After you have read the word, listen to the day's empowering message, take a few moments and pray through the day's reflection points that will be found at the end of each and every message. It will also be posted on our website and social media platforms for your review. May God's peace, power, and blessings be upon you as you take this 15-day journey with us. Pastors Gregory and Marjorie Ford. As we begin this time together, we want to know if there is anything that we can pray with you for. Are you struggling in an area of your life that you can't seem to get through? Are you seeking God to reveal something to you? Do you have any unmet need? If so, we are here for you and we want to let you know that you are not alone. Let us take it to the Lord together in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for opportunities such as these to be able to come together and glorify your name. Lord, we ask that you bless the hearers of this word today and that you empower each and every one of us with your spirit as we seek you in prayer. May the season bring forth a new and exciting thing for all of us. Amen. Day two in the word prayer and empowerment series. The title for today is Conquering in the Pandemic, part one. It will be found in Psalms 34. Today's encouraging word will be led by First Assembly Cornerstone's very own Pastor Gregory Ford. Let us read the word of the Lord together. Psalms 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in the spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones. Not one of them is broken. 
affliction will stay the wicked. And those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Do not forget that after our message, there will be a follow up of for reflection prayer points and they will be posted daily on our social media pages. At this time, let us receive our daily message from Pastor Gregory Ford. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad to see you and welcome you to the 15 days in the word and prayer and empowerment. How do we know that God is truly up to something is when we're walking through, through tough seasons and God does amazing things. And our title today is dealing with conquering in the pandemic. I want to say that again, but someone needs to hear that. Conquering in the pandemic. That's right. You can prosper. You can be on top. You can walk in victory during a season of pandemic. Why? Because when the Lord is on your side, I'm telling you, he'll sustain you. He'll uphold you during crises. I want to get into this, this, this text today in, in dealing, coming from Psalms 34. Uh, what well, the songwriter here is David, and David is sharing with us because he's in a tough spot himself. He has a group of men that are that are with him that he's preparing and training. And sometimes even we'll be going through a tough hour. But what are we going to do when the season is tough? We're going to learn a few things today as we go through, you know, pandemics, as we go through droughts, as we go through financial chaos, as we go through life issues, that we're not in it by ourselves. If we just keep our focus, David's going to remind us about those things as we go forward. Let's just pray for a moment. Father, as I go forth in your name, have thine own way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're writing notes and taking them, I want you to put this down at the heading of your paper, the call for God's people to praise. David, first of all, this song deals with, it opens with the purpose of praise. How important it is that we spend time in praising our God. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise at all times, his praise at all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make an That's just talking about this text. And it talks about overflowing praise. Wow. Overflowing praise. How important that your soul, your mouth, you, that's right, your atmosphere be a praise of, or be an atmosphere of overflowing praise praise, continual praise. I'm always thinking about God, always exalting God, always reminded of his goodness, always reminded of his purposes in my life, keeping in line with his will and his desires and keeping him, come on, as the, as the ultimate point, the ultimate sound of my praise. And David said, I do this all the time in every season. What do you mean? It doesn't matter if you got money or not. I'm still going to praise. It doesn't matter amen, what situation may look like around me. Even if my enemies are on camera, I'm still going to praise. David is talking about overflowing praise. He's also dealing the moment. He takes a moment. He boasts about his God. He said, the humble shall hear me. He said, I will, I, will make, I will make a boast of the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. What do you mean humble? People who are in a place, they're not exalting themselves. They may be in a place where, Lord, where they're, be, they're just waiting. They're just, they're just, they're kind of content where they are. He said, but the humble people is those, come on, we got to talk about humility. Sometimes when we get too fat, and the old preacher used to tell us this, don't get too fat where you forgot who fed you. It's important as we go forth in life, if it had not been for the Lord providing, being there as a shelter, being there as that way maker that he said he would always be and has always been, he wants to do that for you. He wants to continue to strengthen you and let you know. So your job is to make a boast in the Lord. What do you mean? I'm going to talk about his goodness. I'm going to talk about his power. I'm going to talk about his presence. I'm going to talk about how good he is to me and how important it is, come on, that I keep that praise 
in my mouth. And then I continue to boast. I testify. Okay, here we go. Testifying of God's goodness. Reminding people, if he did it before, he'll do it again. He provided a way before, he'll provide a way again. If he rescued you before, he'll rescue you again. And David is sharing his testimony with us on how God did great things in his life. God is the God of deliverance. Oh, man, won't he bring you out? I believe I had some people out there that come from the old church. You know, we used to have testimony service. And people on that week would get up and talk about how God delivered them and set them free from their affliction, set them free from their trial. He delivered them. He snatched them out of the mouth of the fire out of the mouth of the, the, the lions in the den. God will deliver you. He'll bring you through. And that's why David is reminding us in this song about how important it is that we sought the Lord, that we seek out there. And David said, he's giving his testimony. I said, listen, when I was in trouble, I sought the Lord. When I was going through my affliction, I sought the Lord. Guess what? And, 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 and he feared God. He feared, he had, he, he delivered, God delivered me from fear. Because a lot of times we'll get a little, We'll get in a tight spot. We'll go through a heated debate or heated season. And sometimes we don't think he'll do what he has done already because this is new stuff that we're experiencing. This is a new pain. This is a new situation. And sometimes when they show up on our storefront or show up in our homes or even show up in our bodies in a new way, we tend to think that maybe he's not able to deal with this. But I come to tell you, <laughs> he's more than able. Come on, Shadrach and Meshach was here. They'll let you know that he's more than able to deliver us from the burning fire. Upon us. David, amen, seek God, amen, that the spirit of fear wouldn't encamp him. The Bible says in 1 Timothy, I believe it's 1 and 7, he said, listen, he said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Only thing we need to do when we fear God is to give reverence to God, honor him, respect him. That's right. That's the fear. But the fear is not, no, not now. I'm frightened. I'm scared. I'm, I'm, I'm knocking in the knees. No, 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 no. I'm confident that he who had begun a good work, David was praying and David sought the Lord. David knew that God would save him from his troubles. I don't know about you, but there's some things that come out of nowhere, some things that attack our lives, some seasons that we go through. And even in this pandemic, come on, it's showing up. The COVID situation shows up out of nowhere. Amen. And then on top of that, we got these systemic injustice issues that are rising up again. It's not like they've been gone. It's just now that they're surfaced to another level with the George Floyd situation and all the stuff that's going on in our communities. And now here we are going into an election where historical things are happening during an election season. Wow. What did we do? People are losing jobs. But God said, no, God, I cannot fear. No, no, deliver me from fear. He said, Lord, I look to you to save my soul. I look for you to cover and protect me and keep me. And that's what David is saying. David gave testimony of his journey. That's why when you're a seeker, come on, you'll find it. If you keep knocking, he's going to open the door. It doesn't matter if it's in the morning, in the noonday, in the late night hour. Just keep seeking after God. And he will surely make a way somehow. Are you with me? And then he talks to us, hey man, now by conquering in the pandemic, it's not only that, hey man, that we need to be seekers and give our testimonies and share about God and continue to praise God. He said, but people need to join in with you. I need my brothers to join me. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. There's nothing like corporate praise. There's nothing like corporate testimony. There's nothing like one sound, one people, sharing what God has done, giving testimony of his goodness. And that's it, everybody has it. David gave his testimony, but now you ought to give yours. Remind those people that are in a season of challenge, that's a challenging season, a season of turbulence, and a season of chaos. You just tell them, hey, that your God, he delivered me, he'll deliver you if you would only believe. Wow. Isn't that something? That's amazing to know that he's a present help in a time of trouble. And David knew this. David said, the, those who are blessed, you want to know who's blessed? Those who trust in the Lord. Write this down. Blessed people are those who trust in God. 
those who fear their God. There we go. They fear him. They respect him. They honor him. They submit to him. They give that reverence to him because he's that awesome God, the creator, sovereign one, omnipotent, omniscient. Coming on, that God that's always present, always able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we're able to ask or even think. But they knew that. David knew that. But he says, hey, let's join together. He said those who not only just bless him, but those who fear the Lord, but those who seek him. All right? Let's go there now. Sometimes you seek God like you're seeking a treasure. Because there's a place where God can hide you where the devil can't get to you. You seek God like a special thing. Come on, when you're coming down to seeking him. Why? Because I've got to search after him. I've got to search the heart, the desires, the will of God. If I want to stay in a place, come on, where I'm shielded, protected, and, and that I've got his, his favor, I've got his love, I've got his, his, his abilities, the Lord's supernatural powers to guide and protect me. Come on. He said, I want to stay in a place where I seek the Lord. Be a God chaser. I remember Tom McKinney talking about being that God chaser. I mean, it was a powerful book, powerful season. And we ain't out of that season. God chasers need to arise right now. Go after God as the deer panted by the water brook. So with my soul, chase it after thee. Go after it. And this is God talking to us not only that. Join me in that, in that, in that testimonial service. Aaron, I tell some of you need to walk around your house and just go back a little bit in your database and, and check out and try to bring up those memories or those things that God delivered you from back in the day and even the things that he delivered you from back in 19, some of the things that he delivered you from in 15. You know, go all the way back up and then just pull some of those things. I said, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that you still got. I still doing what you've always done. Lord, I remember when I was here. I remember when you did it. And the same God that did it then will do it again. Wow, what a magnificent connection. What a magnificent relationship is that when we have a connection with him, he is faithful to follow through to his promise. Instructions. He began to now, uh, David, we got to remember this, this scene, this type of, uh, uh, when David was on the run, you know, Emily had kind of like don't pushed him out of the zone there a little bit. He runs and hides in the cave. In the cave, we know, man, is the cave of Adullam. In that place, a different type of men came unto him. Men who were in debt, men who were distressed, men who were discontent. I mean, I mean, they was just stressed out in many different ways. And, 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 but these men gathered around David, gathered around a man who was going through himself. But this man had something on him, everybody else. And that he had an anointing on his life. And God began to use him to impact lives in a way like never before. These men that came in broken, these men that came in with a contract, spirit, you know, amen, they, they, they was going through, but God said, listen, listen, this is what I want you to understand. He said, when those men came in, David began to talk to them. He said, listen to him. He said, live in the fear of God. That's right. Live giving reverence to God every day. Remember that he is the highest order in the kingdom, which is obedience. And then also remember, come on here. There's nobody above him. He's the absolute authority. Give reverence to God. Who else do you go to? He's the, he's the highest reach on the ladder. Come on. He's, a, he's eternal present, I mean, past, eternal future. He's, he's all of that. But guess what? That's why we got to reverence him. Honor him. He's the creator of all things. And without him, let me say that again, without him, we are nothing. Wow. And now listen, it says live in the fear of God. That means give reverence to God. Keep your tongue, okay? Be careful. Now we got to work on this one, all of us. All of us have to work on keeping our tongue from evil keeping our tongue from deceit, keeping our tongue from, from, uh, uh, from evil stuff and, and getting in the wrong kind of conversation and doing the wrong kind of thing. He said, keep our tongue from that. He said, but we need to seek peace. We ought to seek God's peace and we ought to seek and pursue it with all our heart. Why do we need peace? Because the scripture tells us that if you keep your mind stayed on Jesus, he'll keep you and perfect peace. Those guys were on that boat going on the other side. The enemy wasn't really after them in the form of physical sickness or death. He was trying to just disrupt and snatch their peace away from them. 
And Jesus knew what, what the assignment of the enemy was. And the first thing he spoke to was peace, be still. Peace, don't you move. Peace, don't you allow this situation to cause you not to look to God, not to focus on God. But I want you to get this. Hold on to your peace. And your peace is in Christ. And this is what David is saying, talking to them and saying, hey, keep your tongue from evil. Pursue peace. And then our God, the watchful eye of our God. <laughs> I'm telling you, first of all, let me say, his eyes are on the righteous. If you're writing this down, take this out. Because write this down, I want to keep this. His eyes are upon the righteous. Come on, his ears are open to those, come on, who cry out to him. He's, man, I love that part. Come on, his eyes are on the righteous. His ears are open to those who cry out to him. I'm wondering when was the last time you prayed and asked God to do something amazing in your life? Every morning, man, I'm coming down the road. I'm leaving that house. And I'm just sharing with God. I said, Lord, I need you to open up the eyes of my understanding. Be with me in every meeting, every conversation. Even join me today, Lord God, and consume me and clothe me in your spirit as I go forth and I share your word. Let it be none of me, but let it be all of you. That's what I want today. That's what I want for you. And then he says, his face, the face of God, come on, amen, the face of the Lord is against those that do evil. That's right, you don't want, you don't want to be included in the club called evil works. You don't want to be included in the, in the club called evil people. You want to be included in the place where the righteous, come on, those who love and have, have mercy, those who have peace, those who desire the, better, the greater good for people, that's where he wants you, okay? And let's jump into that. Let's be a part of that club. He saw also not only his eyes are upon those who are righteous, not only his ears are upon those who cry out unto him, but his face is upon those, amen, that, that, uh, that, that walk in evil. Come on. And then it says, he is the helper of the humble. We talked about that humble place before. Humility is important. Humble thyself before the presence of the Lord, and he would exalt you in due season. Stay humble. He will not only be the helper of the humble, but he will deliver them out of their trouble. You can count on that. When God shall, when you read that word, he shall deliver, that's not an if, that's not a but, that's not a maybe. That's God saying, I'm going to bring you out. I'm going to bring you through. I will deliver you. And he's near to those who have a broken heart and a contract spirit. Let's talk about that broken heart real quickly. I'm going to be wrapping up broken heart and a contrite spirit. What's a broken heart? Someone says feels like God is so far away from them. I know you ever been there? You ever been there? You're going through a season? This is tough, Lord. I don't see, I mean, the clouds are hanging low. You can hardly see the road. Come on. It's bad. And you're wondering, where are the people who live for Christ? Where are the living sacrifices? Where are the people who said they would deny themselves and be there for me? And all of a sudden, they're following me. And then even God, is he's silent in this situation, even that season of being tested, he's silent. But I'm with you, God said, I am with you. But sometimes when you don't hear him, you don't feel him. The best part about that is you can't hear him sometimes and you won't feel him sometimes. But you got to know that you know, that you know the Lord is with you. And you got to be confident of that. And David is sharing with this broken heart. Broken heart somebody sometimes to feel like, like God is distant, that God is not concerned about my situation, or maybe he has forgotten me. That's when the broken heart. But then he talks about the contract spirit. That means somebody who has been beaten. I mean, beaten out. I mean, come on. I've been going through so much. I've been praying, fasting, and preaching, praying. I've been doing all that kind of stuff. And it seems like I've just been doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it for a season. And it looked like he ain't coming. It looked like he ain't heard me. And my spirit has been beaten out. I've been trying to love on people and people be rejecting me. People fight back against what they don't understand. But that's okay. My job is to walk by faith and not by sight and to endure until the end. Stay in the race. Don't unplug, press in. This is your time. It says, however, you know, David had to talk to these men. Come on, he said, many are the afflictions Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Here's a promise. You need to write this down. Keep this with you as you go through the day. And even in your prayer time, as you begin to go through these prayer points that you're going to cover later on, you know, you get these prayer points. No, because many are the afflictions of the righteous. And remember, keep praise where it belongs. Stay humble. Yeah. And give your testimony. Don't talk about the bad. Talk about the good. 
because good will always overpower and win over evil. You hear me? That's what you have to do. And then it says here, however, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but, but here we go. The Lord delivers them out of them all. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter what time it is. God says he's going to deliver you out of them all. Every one of them, he's going to, he's going to bring you through. He who had promised is able to deliver. He who had promised is more than able to deliver. What does he do? He says, I'm going to guard the bones of, of those who serve me. I'm going to guard them. I'm going to keep them and none of them will be broken. He said, those who hate righteous, the righteous, come on, shall be condemned. You know, those haters on the sideline, those spectators, them agitators, you know, all them people on the sideline that ain't looking out for your better good. God said he hate those who hate the righteous. Come on. He said, they're going to be condemned. And he said, he redeems the soul. He redeems the soul, come on, of his servants. Get ready. Redemption belongs to you. You are the redeemed of the Lord. I remember Psalm 107. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You are open your mouth up right now and say something. It's important. And he says that even though, amen, that you, he's redeeming you, none of those who, who fear him shall be condemned. Or none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. I want to, I want to take this time because we, we're going to have a lot of time. My time is up, but I want to share with you. I want to pray. We're getting ready to go into the prayer time. And I just want to pray with you myself. I want to leave this prayer for, for the next couple of minutes and go before God and ask God to do amazing things on our behalf. And it's important as we go forth today that we give God our ultimate attention. And as you're in that room right now, wherever you're standing, maybe you're on your job, I want you to go with me in the hour of prayer, a little time of going before God. I want you to shut the door on everything, shut the door on the noise, turn everything off for a moment, and let's go before the throne of God. Let's go before him to who we know is more than able to restore us. And even though we have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, how are we going to win in the pandemic? We're going to win by keeping his praise in our mouth. How are we going to win in the pandemic? Is that we stay humble. That we keep and continually seeking God. How do we conquer and walk in success in a pandemic while everybody else is walking out, tripping out? Some people are just passing out. Some people just don't understand why and they're upset. But guess what? I hope it's built in nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. We're getting ready to pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, first of all, I come before you and I honor you. I thank you for your being our God. Thank you for, Lord God, your present help. Thank you for being that comforter that you are. Thank you for being that protector that you are. Lord God, we look to you because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We celebrate you today, Lord God, because, Lord God, even though some things may be unsettled and uncertain, but one thing we do know that our God is good. Our God is great, and our God is our, is, a, is our way out and way through this current situation. We know that you already got the final word on the outcome of this present-day circumstance. And Lord, I'm asking you, Lord God, as we celebrate you, as we give you praise, Lord God, we bless your name. We bless you. Oh, God, we bless you because, Lord God, without you, we are nothing. With you, because of your goodness, because of your great and your mercies, Lord God, your tender, loving care, we bless your name. We bless you at home. We bless you in the church. We don't just do it in the, in the congregation. No, we do it in the store. We do it. We bless your name today. And, Lord, as we bless your name, let us worship. Let us worship you. Let us keep worship and praise in our mouths. Let us stay before you in a way that honors your holy name. Don't let us be silent when we ought to be voicing praise. It may be tough out there, and it may be challenging out there, but God, you have never lost the case. You have never lost the battle. We look to you, Lord God. We worship you. We humble ourselves in your presence. And Father, humility, let the spirit of humility move upon our people. Oh God, stop allowing us to be all puffed up and built up in ourselves. Let us humble ourselves and be thankful to God. Thank you for putting the clothes on our back. Thank you for putting the food 
on our table. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us power to gain wealth and to be able to provide for our families and to be able to support your work in the earth realm. Thank you for being that great God that you said you are. Thank you for delivering. I'm already going to praise you for everything that's coming my way. I'm praising you and thanking you, Lord God, that you're going to bring me out. You're going to bring me through. I thank you, Lord God, even in my afflictions, even when there's attacks on my mind, even when there's things coming after me, Lord God, Lord, I still choose to give you praise. I still choose to, to honor you. I still choose to be a seeker. I still choose, Lord, to seek after your will, seek after your desire. Lord God, I want to be like Job. I want to ensure evil. I don't want evil to live in me. I pray every day, Lord God, cleanse me from all my sins, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, cleanse me from every transgression and iniquity. Lord, clean up my slate, said Lord God, that when I do lift my hands, when I do cry out your name, you would humbly, humbly receive my blessings and my prayers and my praise. Lord God, let me be humble. The spirit of humility, Lord, help me. Father, help me to seek after your will. My God, not my will, but thy will be done. Lord, help me to seek after your will. The word of God, help me be one that would read the word often and share the word and keep the word in my mouth. Thy word, David said, I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Lord, help me in my prayer time. Oh God, help me to search your word that you may heal my heart. And he said, Lord, I need guidance. I don't know if I just need your will, but I need your guidance. I need your protection. I need your provision. I need you, Lord, your presence most of all, because in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. You know, your right hand of pleasure is forevermore. Lord, go ahead of us in every area of our lives. Go ahead of our families. Go ahead of our sons and our daughters. Go ahead of our ministry, Lord God. Make our pathway straight. Keep us all from hurt, harm, and danger, Lord God. Uphold us by the power of your word as David was upheld. And David knew that without a doubt, you was his deliverer. Deliver us, oh God. Keep us, oh God. Sustain us, oh God, as we go forth. And Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would continually, Lord God, to pour into us those needful and necessary things to sustain a holy and righteous life. I ask you, Lord God, to do what only you can do. Lord, I'm praying, Lord God, that Lord God, as even Elijah in chapter, Lord God, to uh, Second Kings, I believe, is chapter six or seven, where kings, amen, where the king of Syria had encamped. Amen. His army around the prophet Elijah. And Lord, they camped around him. They had him surrounded. He couldn't get out, but he didn't worry about that. He didn't worry about the army of Syria. Matter of fact, he prayed for his servant that you would open up his eyes that he might see. And I pray right now, Lord, open up the eyes of all of those that are listening right now, all those that are praying right now, all those that are seeking you. Say, Lord, open my eyes that I might see. So even when the enemy comes in like a flood, open my eyes that I might see. Even when I'm in camp all around about my enemies, when financial chaos, when, Lord, family chaos, Lord God, amen, relationship issues, Lord God, things on the job, things in the business, in our nation, Lord, we're all that we need you to encamp your angels around us like you encamp the, those angels around your servant, Elijah. We speak it and decree it in Jesus' name that, Lord, you're setting around our nation, our community, our families, even those that are on this prayer line right now. You're encamping angels around them to keep them from falling, keep them from, Lord God, becoming weak and being entrapped by the snares of the enemy. Because your presence is greater than the enemy's attack. And we claim deliverance. We claim freedom. In Jesus' name. In these things we ask in your name, we pray. Amen and thank God. Wow. I just want to just say thank you, God, for the time. For those of you that came on today, just a few announcements for you. Amen. As we continue on, um, go and we follow. You're going to move on to another section here. We're going to talk about the prayer points. I need you to go and read those prayer points. Follow them and pray throughout the day about the things that God has put on your heart. Just don't let this, this is a, this is a, a launching prayer. This is an initiation prayer. Amen. We want to use this to ignite your prayer life 
as well as empower your prayer life, amen, so that you could be set aflame. Come on in, a flame. You'll be, you be burning on the inside to go before God about your needs. And I believe that God is going to give you victory in the pandemic. You are more than a conqueror. So go to the prayer points, review those, and attach those to the things that you're walking through today, some things that you're dealing with. Pray. Pray. Don't pray just after now. Pray later. Pray a couple of times before you even go to bed tonight. Spend some time reviewing those prayer points and applying them to your life. And then on tomorrow, we're going to take it to the next level on part two of conquering in the pandemic. I also want to give you an opportunity. Some of you that hey, please go to our website, be a support to our ministry. Help us and partner with us in making a difference around the world. There are so many people that need to hear the gospel, need to hear truth, because there's a lot of voices in the land, but all the voices are all the voices truly of God. We want God to speak through us. We want God us to, we need God-fearing people like yourself who will stand with us and help us take this gospel to the next level. So go to www.firstassemblycornerstone.com. And you'll go to the give column and click on that across the top column. You'll see a different thing where you can click on to that'll take you different ministries. So got the about, you got the live, and then you got the give. Click on the give and then it'll drop down into another box and uh, follow the instructions and give to the ministry and help us impact the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can't do it without you. And join us on Facebook, join us on YouTube for our services on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. as well as at noon for the next 13 days. That's right, we got day uh, 15 and 14, but we got 13 more to go before we end this challenge, amen. We believe that this is gonna be a great season for everyone, all right? And then also uh, go there and remember, Pray about those things you need God to do. And at this time, as I lead out, I want to go uh, to the prayer points, and we're going to move on from here. God bless you. Then we're going to the prayer points at this moment. Thank you. Prayer points.
Thank you for joining First Assembly Cornerstone for 15 Days in the Word Prayer and Empowerment Series, where we're asking God to reveal, refresh, rejuvenate, heal, and transform the land during these uncertain times. May God bless you, keep you, and be with you. Until we meet again tomorrow, have a blessed day.